to my first question for you is, how did you start your acting career? Um, I think kind of very similar to a lot of other actors, just sort of uh, like school productions um, and like pantomime. We, like, I don't know if it's a big thing in America, but uh, like pantomime is like a really big deal in this country. It's like this like festive um, play that loads of communities do at Christmas. And, and so I kind of got involved in that. And um, yeah, and just I think my biggest memory of it is uh, like we did a school production of Oliver Twist when I was in like when I was like 12 years old, I think. And um, that was, I played the Outfall Dodger in that, and that was the thing that really kind of lit the spark for me and made me realize that I wanted to do it. And what is something that you hope audiences here in the States can learn about the UK from watching this show? Um, I think it's, uh, it's got a lot to say about our kind of working culture. Um, and a lot of those themes, I think, are really global, really. The writers have really responded to, um, you know, the, the real big kind of cultural movements that we've been seeing over the last sort of half decade um, that cover all, all sorts of topics. So I think um, it's not, it doesn't necessarily have to be a specifically London show, but there's so much um, character in it that, that does come from, uh, come from Britain, I suppose. But um, what's really nice is an American audience will be able to see that through the eyes of a fellow American, I suppose, because uh, one of our leading characters is, is from the States and is kind of new to London in the show. Um, so they can see everything through her new perspective, I suppose. And what is one of your favorite things about London? Uh, oh, I, I love it so much. I've, I've lived in London for a while and um, it's, there's so many things to love about it. It's so diverse. It feels like a real kind of global metropolis, which is kind of amazing. It's got so many different identities, you know. Um, but probably an underrated thing about London is the amount of green spaces that we have. We've got loads of gorgeous parks um, which is kind of rare for such a big bustling city, I think. Um, and so, yeah, I love those. And what was your preparation process for the role of Robert? Um, my preparation, it, it sort of follows the same kind of pattern, no matter what character I'm working on. Um, and so that normally includes uh, as much like external research as I can do. Uh, so research into like the world that the character lives in and um, and think I need to know in that respect, but most of it comes from doing a backstory. I get kind of very academic with it and, and do a big, um, you know, probably five, six page backstory, kind of just the details, like everything that's happened to him from, from day dot to now, um, and any kind of significant moments that might have shaped two years or, or the kind of choices that he makes. Um, and so I kind of get everything from that. And it's not necessarily the kind of work that you'd see coming through on the screen, but I like to think that hopefully it's all kind of hovering somewhere in the back of my head and um, maybe influences a few of the things that I do. And with Robert being the life of the party, what was your favorite thing about playing this character? Um, probably that, that duality really, because as you say, he is the life of the party and that certainly made some of my shooting days a bit more enjoyable because uh, obviously there's a lot of hard work that goes on behind the scenes, but I could really, at least on camera, kind of let loose. Um, which was nice. But then, as I say, that duality, because underneath all that and all his kind of hedonism and craziness, uh, he's a very kind of sensitive guy, really. Um, and he's very kind of led by his heart rather than his head and um, kind of quite vulnerable, really. He just wants to be accepted and, and liked and respected and, and validated, I suppose. Um, and those are really kind of sympathetic characteristics that are nice to sort of examine and, and work out uh, why he's become that way. And what was the biggest challenge with creating this character and building the role? Um, I suppose it's just a big step out of my uh, ordinary life experience. You know, like I, I'm not a banker and I certainly don't uh, party as crazily as Robert does. Um, so it's, you know, like with any part, it's, it's kind of stepping into someone else's shoes and feeling like you can authentically walk in them and, and, and really believe it, you know. And um, so that's the challenge with anything, I suppose. But uh, yeah, just trying to understand those drives and motivations that are very different to my own in life. You know, I don't want, I, I, I don't necessarily define my success by how much money I make, which is really an integral part of banking, I suppose. And so just getting behind that kind of psychology, I guess. And how are you able to get into that mindset of sort of being money hungry and competitive? Um, I think a lot of it in the show, especially through my character and through the character of Harper, 
Um, I think the really easy access to understanding that drive is understanding where they've come from. Um, they're both very aspirational, you know, and um, there's actually a line in the show where someone asks Harper, you know, don't you think it's a bit gauche to sort of measure success by money? And she says, well, yeah, not if you've never had any. And I think that applies to Robert as well. Um, they are able to see monetary gain as, as a way of kind of have proving self-worth and proving that they've done something with their lives and that they've uh, climbed their own ladder, you know? Um, and even though to some others in the show, money is incidental and it, it's, um, it's just another day, to them, it really means something quite emotional, really. It's not superficial to them. Um, it's important and it has a different kind of intrinsic value in their, in their minds. And, um, and so, it, yeah, I think, as, as I said before, really, it's kind of looking at what's gone before in their lives to understand what drives them forward. And what is something that you learned through playing Robert and being a part of this cast? Um, I learned so much. <laughs> it's really hard to say because, you know, obviously the leads in the show were all fairly inexperienced, really. And this is a, a kind of life changing project for us, you know. Um, and so to have the opportunity to go and do that, it, the whole the whole experience is a lesson, you know, almost every day is a learning day. You know, and um, we were really lucky to work with some experienced actors um, who were also just incredibly kind and friendly. And, um, and there was a real kind of great atmosphere amongst the, amongst the team. Um, and so, yeah, it's really hard to say one thing. I learned so many practical things about, about making television uh, and then just also a lot of things about what it takes to, to have the responsibility of, of a project like this and to have this many people kind of depending on you to, to do your work, you know? Um, but all of it was, that makes it sound quite intimidating, but uh, all of it was just a joy. And in what way do you feel like industry is different from any other finance mo movie or television show that we've seen in the past? Um, I think it, it, it's heart, I think makes a difference makes makes it a difference sorry um you know it, it's quite a a well-trodden genre the kind of banking world and i think you can understand why because the, there's lots of highs and lows and it's it's a step outside of most people's kind of day-to-day -day. there's a real escapism with it but um but for us in this show we all got a sense that the bank and the banking industry was very much kind of just a bank backdrop um really it's about um, young people and it's a study of like what it means to be a, a young adult in the 21st century and um, all the external pressures that come with that and kind of working out who you are and who you want to be in in an industry that's in real kind of evolution and, and you are having to try and keep up with it um, and I think that's fascinating you know it's, it's really it's really driven by characters you know and and their interactions with one another and the bank itself is kind of just a bit of a cauldron to throw all these people together in. And with the relationship between Gus and Robert, we see in what ways that one might have privileges that the other doesn't and the diversity of privilege and the nuances with that. What do you think people can learn about privilege through seeing their relationship? Um, I think it's a really interesting part of the show, their relationship, um, especially given that, as I kind of said, with with the start of the show it's it's a group of new graduates at a new bank and everything's fresh and exciting and, and the audience is i think discovering this environment along with the characters whereas with robert and gus it's pretty much the only relationship in the show which has context already you know which has a history that that, that we're bringing to the first episode and and the audience have to assume that relationship i suppose because it's been it's been made and grown over a couple of years but I think it's a fascinating relationship because their their personal life experiences are so wildly different. But at the end of the day, they're united by love and friendship and respect. And I think that's a great message generally that we don't have to kind of define ourselves by who we are, where we come from and what we look like. And as long as we can find those kind of uniting sort of uh, values and bonds, then, then that's all that matters. But then also, it, the show kind of tests that, you know, it, it kind of tests the strength of those bonds uh, with success or, or attention from um, 
from bosses and, and, and people senior to them. And they're now, for the first time in their friendship, in direct competition with one another and, and vying for a goal, you know, that they both really, really want. Um, and that's going to put strain on their relationship and also kind of, in a more sinister way, bring their economic social differences to the surface, you know, and uh, kind of reminding them both of the distance that there really is between them, even though they've forgotten, perhaps. Um, I think that's really fascinating. And audiences will also see the story of Harry and the intense pressure all of the graduates were placed under. Do you think that the show depicts the reality of life in the finance industry? Uh, I'd like to think so to an extent. You know, obviously it's a drama and, and there's got to, as with all drama, there's probably some embellishments here and there, but, um, you know, our, our show is written by two uh, new writers, uh, Mickey and Conrad, and they're both former bankers themselves. So this is a world that they know kind of intimately well from personal experience, you know? And so you've got to hope that there's some real authenticity there. And, and you know, from my perspective, when certain things happen in the show, I remember filming them and, and sort of pulling them to a side and saying, this didn't really happen, did it? And they were like, well, yeah, that was one time. Uh, and so, yeah, you, the, you, you do get the impression that this is lived experience for them. Um, and uh, certainly some of the, some of the key uh, uh, events in the show, early on in the show, like what you mentioned, are, are based off uh, real life stories, you know? And um, so definitely there's some real kind of home truths, I think, in there. But um, at the end of the day, it is also a TV show where, you know, we aim to kind of entertain and, and give people a bit of an escape. So there's probably a fine line between the two, really. And in what ways do you feel as though Robert has evolved from the first episode to the end without giving away any spoilers? Okay. Uh, yeah, I think for sure. I, all the key characters in the show evolve in a big way because the job really tests them as people. Um, I think Robert, his maybe key kind of arc, I suppose, is learning to drop that kind of mask that he wears the the kind of the bravado and, and the charisma that he puts on which I think is also part of him but um he maybe leans into it too much because he thinks that's what people want from him and he thinks those are the skills he needs to be successful or be liked or be respected and um and that puts him on this kind of hunt for validation but it, he's looking for validation from all the wrong people and I think maybe towards the end of the the series he comes to realize um the people in his life that are really good for him you know and to kind of value that a bit more and have a bit more self-respect I suppose and like himself a bit more hopefully um but we don't know if he does I suppose it, it, it's it's a it's a difficult journey for him um but he's he's on he's on the way hopefully and Robert is kind of the glue of the group of graduates. He has a unique relationship with each and every person that we see. Um, what was it like building that relationship with your cast members and really building those bonds for the screen? Um, it was great. It was the best part of the job, really. Um, you know, it's why I love doing this job. It's why I love acting, because uh, you really get a sense that you're part of a team, you know, and, um, and we, we were up filming in Wales actually for about six months, uh, but we all lived in the same apartment block and we did everything together. And yeah, there was a real, it's a bit of a cliche, but there was a real kind of life bond and connection between us all. And we all got, had the sense, you know, because as I say, we're all quite inexperienced and this was so exciting for us that we, wow, this is, we're having the time of our lives, you know, I can't believe we're doing this. Um, and so when it came to translating that to the screen, it was like the easiest part of our job, you know, because it really was already there. And what was your favorite part about filming this show? Oh, I don't know what to say without giving spoilers away. Um, I don't know if it is a spoiler, I don't know. <laughs> um, but uh, there was so many, like, there was so many moments, like, I remember it, like, in the first three weeks of the, of the show, um, we were shooting this scene outside a bar on the street and it was just a really lovely scene and I really enjoyed it and it, it, it really felt like um, even though I was in the 
in the middle of this big kind of HBO production. I, I, in, in terms of the acting, it felt like I could just be in like a tiny theater as well. It was just really intimate and easy to do. And I had a lovely time with my cast member doing it. And then we finished. And then as is the case on, on sets, everyone just rushed off to the next bit, which I wasn't in. Uh, and I just kind of literally saw like 50 people just move down the road to the next kind of setup. And I kind of suddenly got a sort of left really, uh, which not in, a, not in a mean way, but, um, but and it was quite a nice really, because it, it, was, it was in the evening, it was quite late, it must've been like 10 o'clock or something like that. And I kind of just got left in this moment. I was like, God, this is great. Like, I'm, I can't believe I'm here. Like, I really can't believe I'm, I get to do this. Um, so it was just one of those real pinch yourself moments. And, um, and yeah, one of the writers, I remember saying, he said to me, you know, oh, don't worry, that'll wear off. You know, you'll get used to that. And um, I really didn't, to be honest. It just kind of, it just kind of stayed being great for the whole time, which was lovely. And in what ways do you feel as though Robert is misunderstood? Um, I think he's definitely misunderstood. I mean, I misunderstood him for a start. Uh, when I first auditioned for the part, I, I hadn't read all of the scripts. I'd only read his scenes for the first two episodes, I think. And uh, I came in and played him like a real, like, not a great guy. And um, and the, the casting director, Julie Harkin, in the audition kept on saying to me, no, he's a really lovely guy. He's a really nice, nice guy. He's really sensitive. And I was like, is he? Like, he, do <laughs> like, he doesn't look like it. He doesn't seem that way. Um, but as we said, it's all that kind of confidence and it's his kind of mask and it's his barrier that he puts up because I think he cares too much about what people think of him, which is something that I think everyone's probably done at one time or another in their lives. And, and I know that I have. And, um, and yeah, so I think once he learns to kind of be a bit more comfortable with who he is and let people in a bit more and, and, and have the, the bravery to show his more sensitive side in the knowledge that that will be kind of received and accepted by other people, which sometimes it always won't always be, you know, um, that's when you'd get to know what he's actually like, I suppose. And my final question for you is, what do you hope audiences will gain from watching the show industry? Um, I hope they'll enjoy it first and foremost. Like, uh, you know, I, I, I'm one of those actors. I don't always take, the job too seriously I think first and foremost we should entertain people you know that's what we're here to do um so I hope people enjoy it but then more than that I hope that people find it enlightening and um engaging and learn a bit about um you know some of the industries that are still operating uh in certain ways in the world and and the uh, the effect that it has on different uh demographics and groups and and um and they'll, I hope that they'll think about that and, and have some kind of emotional gut response to that, you know, because the show doesn't judge anyone, I don't think, but it, it, it lays all of these scenarios and characters and, and scenes out for you to make your own uh, judgment on them, you know. Um, so I hope it makes people think as well.